Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to go over a subject that a lot of you are interested in and probably one of the questions that I get asked the most and I'm talking about motors on kayaks. So I'm gonna go over today my top five best kayaks for motorization. So what am I basing this list off of? So these are my opinion, my personal top five, but first and foremost is these kayaks are gonna be both bow and stern mount capable. Second, we're gonna be, what kind of weight capacity do these kayaks have? Is it gonna be adequate to store the motor, the battery, the paddler, and the gear? And finally, is it DIY friendly? Is this kayak gonna be easy for you to rig yourself if you don't have a paddle shop nearby or somebody to do this for you? So I'm gonna go over to my top five. I'll go over some honorable mentions, maybe some maybe on the outside looking in, just barely, and I'll go over my do better list. So these are gonna be kayaks that maybe had the best intentions, but really didn't deliver on the promises when they originally came out. So let's get right into it. So starting out at number five, I'm gonna go over is the Old Town Autopilot. So the Autopilot sold in two different sizes, the 120, which is a 12 foot, and the 136, which is a little over 13 and a half. So these are really, in my opinion, these are the kayaks that started it all. So every, you know, people have been putting clamp-on trolling motors on watercraft since years and years ago in the old style canoes. But in kayaks, this really kind of broadened the horizons of the entire kayak fishing industry. And again, talking about the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot series. So the reason I've got it on number five and it's a little bit lower on the list is because it's been around for a little while and it's in need of an update. So in both price and motor. So standard motor on there is a Minn Kota 45 pound thrust trolling motor which again, I love the setup because it's simple. It's unique in the fact that it is in the middle instead of on the front or the back. It's got a great rudder setup, foot control steering. You can, you can set it up with foot control steering or you've got the little lever on the side. And I really like the way Old Town does their rudder deployment, which is a lever on the right side that you, that you flip forward and backward and it flips up this big beaver tail rudder, which really does a good job of controlling this large kayak. And it is a large kayak. So most of the kayaks in this list are going to fit that bill, but the Autopilot, specifically the 136, while you got plenty of room, it is a huge, huge, think of like 1970s car huge. So anyways, guys, that's number five on the list. So number four and this is gonna be a little bit of a cop out here and I'm talking about the entire new canoe lineup. So why am I doing all of them? Well, all of them are really made with motorization in hand. So when they were designed, new canoe has been running the flat transom for years. They've gone into the bow mount motorization with the Frontier series and then now the Unlimited series. And then now they've got both 10 and 12 foot options on both of these models. Uh, a lot of people forget about the Flint. The Flint also has that flat transom as well as some capability to do a bow mount, although you will need to modify it a little bit more to do that. So the new canoe lineup has been one of the more popular lineups in the paddle sports industry. And they were really, in my opinion, kind of before their time. So it, you can make the argument that new canoe would have really hurt if the industry didn't move to the motorization option. They do have some great paddling kayaks, but when people are looking at new canoe, they're looking at motorizing it immediately or possibly down the road. And they've always done a great job of selling products and having features on their kayaks that make them DIY friendly with now their access plates on the bow, stern, and the sides for, again, you can't forget about your fish finder, depth finder, and even live scope, which is you know really kind of where it's going, things are going in that direction. But New Canoe's lineup with a great warranty, easy DIY, and a lot of products and features that they sell from New Canoe, you can actually buy the motors from New Canoe 
all at once. So again, if you have a retailer that carries that brand, the chances are they can also get the motors, the batteries, and even the mounting options from New Canoe as well. So number three, and this is gonna be a tricky one for a lot of you, I, I anticipate, is the Hobie Pro Angler in both the 12 and the 14. So again, Hobie doesn't sell the motor mount plate for the bow, but you can get that from One Objective. You can get it from a lot of, you know, Catch. You can get that from a lot of places, but it's really made for that as well. And then the stern mount option is really nice also with the popularity of Newports and Torquedos really kind of coming on strong in the last couple of years. Now the Pro Angler, the thing that I do like about it is there's a lot of different ways you can rig it. It may not be as DIY friendly as some of the other kayaks on this list, but it's extremely comfortable. It's extremely roomy and you've got a really nice option for your pedal drive just in case something were to fail on your motor. So with the fin drive, it's very efficient. Again, a lot of the problems with Hobie over the last few years have been on the 360 drive. If you're looking at motorizing the kayak, personal opinion, I would go with the 180 drive, especially if you're looking to motorize as your primary form of propulsion. You can still carry the drive with you just in case something were to happen, but they do have the little plug that plugs that hole up that the drive goes into. So if you just wanna carry a paddle with you just in case something happens, if you're not too worried about it, it can save you a lot of space. But the Hobie Pro Angler has a great job of space. Not only does it have one of the best tank wells and decks in the industry, but the seat is by far my favorite of any kayak still made today. But it, it does come at a premium. When you're looking at a Hobie Pro Angler, even the 180 drive, you're looking at about a $4,000 to $4,500 range, depending on what kind of discounts you can find out there. You're gonna go even more than that for the 360 drive. You're getting close to $6,000 now. So it's definitely the most expensive on the list, but if it's, if it's in that budget, you're not gonna be disappointed with the comfort and the motorized options and storage on the Hobie Pro Angler Series. So getting to my top two here. So number two, and I'm gonna go with another pedal drive kayak, and this is gonna be the native Titan X 12.5. Now they also make the Titan X in a 10 and a half foot version, but I always tell people if you're looking to motorize the kayak, the 12.5 is really gonna be where you want to go on that. Reason being, and it's one thing that Big Adventures and Native is definitely aware of, is the battery compartment is too small to store most even lithium batteries for that bow mount motor or that stern mount motor. So you're supplied with that battery compartment right by the seat. And if it's not big enough to carry most of the batteries needed for the, either the bow or the stern mount motor, it's really useless. You're gonna need to carry it on top of it. So the 12.5 has more than enough storage space for your battery. You've also got the storage space under the front hatch for electronics, lighting, depth finders, anything like that. A great, great high back Millennium 360 swivel seat like you see on the New Canoe series. But the thing that I like about the Titan X series is the roominess. So you've got the access plates, a lot like New Canoe has done. You've got the swivel seat, you've got open deck space. And the pedal drive is really nice because it is very low profile. So the Titan X series is one of the better options, I think, if you're wanting to go stern mount motor, which a lot of people are here in 2024 and beyond, I anticipate. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to use the motor to get to your spot and then use your pedal drive to kind of troll around and move around once you get to that area. But it gives, it really pairs nicely with that stern mount motor and the bow and the stern are both reinforced on the hull to give you the option of going either or. It's not made for both, which some people have run that, but I definitely don't suggest that you do that. It is the heaviest kayak on the list at 172 pounds fully rigged up, so keep that in mind. Now, Native also does their weight capacities on by subtracting the hull weight off of the max capacity to give your usable capacity. Old Town does this also, as well as Bonafide. They at least are upfront about it, as I don't believe that some other companies do that, although they do use that, that formula. But 
just a note up front, that is something that you're going to need to consider moving forward with battery weight, motor weight, gear, as well as yourself. So make sure that you're well within that range before you look at going out on the water or building out this kayak. But it's a definitely a good option, and I maintain that this is the most stable kayak that I've ever been in still to this day, and I've been on all of them. So if you're looking for stability and a good motorized option, the Titan X 12.5 might be the best thing for you. Okay, so number one, and this may not be a big shocker to you, but here in 2024 and before, the PWR 129 from Bonafide Kayaks, in my opinion, is the best motorized kayak option. Now, again, that's my opinion, and it may differ depending on what you want out of your kayak. If you're looking for that wide open deck space, the New Canoe Unlimited may be better for most of you guys. But for me, I love the way the PWR is laid out. I love the storage. I love the hatch storage. I love the battery storage. The weight capacity is great for this kayak, but the speed, the efficiency, and hull performance matters when you're talking about motorizing a kayak. So you're gonna get, get better speed, better efficiency, which is gonna drain less on your battery. You're gonna go longer with not, you know, with less really. And those of you that don't wanna run a 100 amp hour battery, may, this may be a great option for you. I love the fact that it comes with the rudder and the foot control steering from the factory, so it's not any additional gear that you need to buy, but it's a great value at $19.99 now. It's a couple hundred dollars more than Unlimited, but you get a little bit more bang for your buck in my opinion. So the speed is really my favorite thing about the PWR 129, and it's made with that DIY in mind. So it's easy to rig up yourself. If you mess something up, it's easy to buy those plates. And in my opinion, the plates are a little bit more waterproof than you get on the Unlimited without doing any kind of modification or any you know, additional gaskets on there. So that's one thing I like about it. You also get the high-low seating, which depending on your comfort level, you may be in the high position all of the time, but it is really nice, depending on what kind of water you're on, to have that low position. So that's one reason that I love this kayak. Okay, so going into honorable mention, and my, the next kayak I'm gonna talk about, I wouldn't really consider an honorable mention. It's a 2025 kayak, and many of you are probably wondering where the XTR 130 is. So this kayak is getting ready to ship out, and in my opinion, this is gonna be the greatest motorized kayak option ever, but without really knowing, uh, you know, other than what most of you have seen on YouTube or from iCast, it's really tough to tell. It's lighter than a Titan X uh, 12.5. It, you know, we don't know anything about the speed. We've heard a lot of great things about it and it's primarily built for somebody that really wants to rig this thing up. And personally, if you're wanting to any, if any part of you is wanting to paddle a kayak, the PWR, I still feel like, gives a better value out of the box. But if you've got a trailer, if you're going to rig this thing up with one or two motors, electronics, this may be the best option for you. But without really getting hands-on, I just feel like it'd be irresponsible to talk about like it's the greatest thing ever made. I anticipate it will be, but until I see one in person, it's really kind of hard to talk about it. So again, it is what it is, guys. We'll find out more about that here in the coming months and weeks here, hopefully, but you just never know. So my next honorable mention is going to be the Kusa X from Jackson. So the Kusa X is kind of, it came out last year and it's kind of their version of the River and Creek Skinny Water Paddler. Now it comes in at 98 pounds, but it does have the little flat bow area if you wanted to do a motor guide motor on there and it does have the pre-threaded inserts for the stern mount. Uh, Jackson Kayak really suffers from lack of bow mount motor capability but the Kusa X they really kind of started to dive into that a little bit deeper because river and creeks are also great for spot lock motors and I'm not talking about something that's just running rapids or anything. This is a very capable paddling kayak, so it's also a very good motorized option as well. The Kusa X, if there's something, if you're wanting to do both kinds of water, the PWR I still think is one of the better ones out there for both rivers and creeks and lake, but the Kusa X may be, you know, may be right for you. At $18.99 here in 2024, 
it's too close to the PWR, in my opinion, to really say that this should be up on that top five list with the big boys. But if you're a Jackson guy and you like the Jackson Kusa X, it's still an option for you if you're wanting to motorize. The final one for honorable mention is gonna be the Bonafide SS-127. So the SS-127 has been around for a long time. You have both bow mount and stern mount capability. You have a great seat and you can find these pretty cheap on the used market. If you haven't watched my video on my best five used kayaks to buy, it's definitely on that list. And it's still extremely customizable. You can do foot control steering. You can do a lot of different things and it's still a relevant kayak today. But with the advances in performance with the PWR and a lot of other kayaks out there, it's really kind of taken a step back to a lot of those kayaks, but could be a very good value for your first kayak and maybe still wanting to maybe motorize down the road. You can save a ton of money on that, either buying it through use or finding a deal on it new and still get that capability that you're wanting. It doesn't have as good of a weight capacity rating as maybe the PWR or even the XTR does, but the money savings, and if you're not carrying a whole ton of stuff with you, it may be worth it for you. So my do better is going to be really kayaks that were made or maybe some companies that I'd like to see these options from that just haven't really done it yet. And I talked about Jackson Kayak. Well, the Jackson NAR was one of the biggest failures in the kayak industry, in my opinion. And there's a lot of people that like them. They're definitely one of the faster kayaks on the market, in my opinion, but they have that little flat area on the bow made for that. But honestly, I would never put a bow motor on a NAR. The reason being is it's very thin up front. And when you're talking about putting that weight, that power, that thrust from say a motor guide or even a Minn Kota, you're really gonna have some long-term struggles on that, I believe. So the plastic, again, that is not meant for that stress. They may have anticipated being able to do that, but just it, there's just better options on the market. And at over $4,000, there's just better value out there with maybe a Titan X or even an autopilot. So that's one thing that I really feel like they really fell flat on. But again, if you like that Jackson brand, which a lot of us do, the Kusa X is probably a little better value and a little bit better option and it just has better features in my opinion. But again, I'm more of a river and creek guy, so take that for what it is there. My next one, and, and this is not a knock on this company at all. I'm, a, I'm kind of a fan of Crescent Kayaks. So Crescent Kayaks, they do have some models like the Sholey that do have some motor capability, but it may not be the best for that bow mount. They may be a lot better for the stern mount, which again, for rivers and creeks, that's gonna be kind of the, the spot for you if you're looking to doing that. But I would really love to see a Crescent kayak, maybe some, some big open water, maybe get into a fishing kayak that does both really well. I definitely think the technology and the smarts are definitely there at Crescent Kayak. They're made with performance in mind. And I've said this before, performance in a motorized kayak is going to give you a lot more enjoyment and a lot more efficiency. You're not looking at winning any races, but you're not wanting to have your top speed with a motor be three miles an hour. Some of you can probably paddle reasonably well that fast, or some of your pedal drives can get more than that speed. So I would really like to see them maybe evolve Maybe just have one kayak for big open water, fishing kayak. They've got comfortable seats, they have fast hull designs, and having that bow and stern motor, really, I would really like to see them kind of venture into that. So I would like to see them do better on that, but from what I hear, there may be something like that in, in the works. So I'm looking forward to hearing from years to come on what Crescent has to, in store for us. All right, everybody, so I definitely appreciate you watching the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments if maybe if I missed something. If I missed something, let me know what I missed, but let me know which kayak that you would replace it with in, uh, in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support on the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.